Church's live stream broadcast. Mm -hmm. This is Pastor Carson, your worship leader, and we are so happy to have you join our live stream worship this morning. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 34 counsels us about standing on the sidelines while we watch things and wait for things to happen. God offers help to those who will watch and wait for things to happen while doing something to change things for the better. Embrace God's counsel. You'll love God more, and I promise you, you'll love his therapy for our lives. Friendship continues to act on God's therapeutic help by living our mission to love God, love others, and serve our community, whether we do it live or in person or through virtual technology. Psalms chapter 8 verse 34 gives us our call to worship this morning by declaring blessed is the man or woman who listens to me awake and ready for me each morning alert and responsive as I start my day's work. Please foster yourselves now for our morning prayer which will be led by Reverend Sylvia E. Jones. Good morning, church. Let us bow together. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, thanking you for your goodness, for your grace, and for your mercy. Lord, we have come to give you all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise this morning. God, we are just so grateful being in your presence this morning. We are so grateful, Lord, for you have kept us over the past week. Heavenly Father, let your Holy Spirit come and dwell with us this morning. Dwell, Holy Spirit, in this sanctuary. Dwell, Holy Spirit, in our minds. Dwell, Holy Spirit, in our hearts. Lord, bless those who have come to worship within these walls. Somehow we press our way home. Oh, you said how good it is to come together in unity. Bless those families, Lord God, who are tuning in to worship with us this morning from around the world. We pray that through the preached word this morning, we will be fed with manna from the high. Oh God, I know about Pastor this morning. Empower him to proclaim the truth of your word. We pray, O oh Father, that someone listening somewhere today in this world may say, Yes, yes, I need the Lord. Time is right. I need to make a decision for my life. I need to come and stop my wicked ways. I need to say, Jesus. I need you. My family needs you. My neighborhood needs you. Each and every one. My family. We need you, Lord. We won't let them make a decision just for me. Just say yes. I accept Christ as my Savior. It's not too late. The preach world will be going forth. Empower our pastor this morning as he proclaims the word, the truth of your word. It is in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ that I can pray. Let us all say amen, amen. and amen. amen. Thank you. 
seats as we praise God through our fine arts ministry, our mind ministry, and the beautiful male chorus. God bless you. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Yeah. 
of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. You are our strength. Hallelujah. And our Redeemer in Jesus' name we pray. Those who wanted to hear from the Lord and him only said Amen. 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 We want to encourage you this morning from a passage that you have heard about but perhaps you have not listened to it from the background of the text. So often we like to go for when we read a scripture, what we see on the surface. But there's so much more underneath. Don't look at me strange. The disciples asked Jesus, why do you talk so funny? And he said, it's because what people see with their eye is not what I want them to have. They have to go deeper. So we want to encourage you as you turn to Luke's gospel this morning, chapter 2. Look at verses 25 through 31. You'll read a story about Simeon in the temple waiting on baby Jesus. But I want you to see what he had to do while he watched and waited. Luke chapter 2, verse 25 through 31, from the Bible in basic English, reads in this fashion. And there was then in Jerusalem a man whose name was Simeon. And he was an upright man, fearing God and waiting for the comfort of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was on him. Don't forget that part. The Holy Spirit was on him. And he had knowledge through the Holy Spirit that he would not see death till he had seen the Lord's Christ. And full of the Holy Spirit. It's one thing to have the Holy Spirit. It's another thing to be full of it. Let me just say there's a whole lot of people full of something, but it ain't the Holy Ghost. And he had knowledge through the Holy Spirit that he would not see death till he had seen the Lord's Christ. And full of the Holy Spirit, he came into the temple. When the father and mother came in with the child Jesus to do with him what was ordered by law, dedicate him to the Lord, that is. Then he took him in his arms and gave praise to God 
and said, singing it. Now you are letting your servant go in peace, O Lord, as you have said. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have made ready before the face of all nations. You may have your seats in the house of God, those on live stream, just for a few moments. We want to encourage you that there is counseling for those who watch and wait. There is counseling for those who watch and wait. This morning, we were blessed by Dr. Renee Peterson's presentation in our reflection hour. Amen. About how important it is that counseling is needed, but you got to be careful who you get your counseling from. Because certain people will watch and wait on what they see, but not watch and wait on how they can help somebody else. Amazing how people can tell you what your problem is without ever first hearing what you have to say. <laughs> Many times we'll go into a situation as believers and we see it and we're, we, are, we feel the pain and hurt that an individual has, but instead of talking to them, we immediately pray to God for what we want God to do for them without ever listening to what that person needs from the Lord. Amen. Let me just say this so that I can keep it moving. Many times I go to the hospitals and into homes to visit the sick and the shut-in, and you would think that it is their sickness or their shut-inness that they want to talk about. But when you get there, they just want to know about their cat. <laughs> they want to know that their cat is fed while they're in the hospital. When you get to their house, they just want to know, can somebody fix their cable? Not that they're shut in. Amen. Oh, y'all missed it right there. Amen. You see, we need counseling because too many times we're watching and waiting. Instead of what the text implies about watching and waiting is action. And so for many, this text describes what many of us are going through. All of us go through some type of opposition. But here's the other thing that we don't understand. That's why Simeon is so important in this text. Because Simeon was known as a righteous man, a man of good character, a man that was holy, a man that had the Holy Spirit with him. Amen. But because he was watching and waiting without the wrong help, he just got older and older and older. Watch this. Watching. And waiting. Amen. Oh, brothers and sisters, I'm not just talking about age number. Amen. You can grow old watching and waiting for your children to turn around. Amen. We can grow old watching and waiting for that job we know the Lord has for us, but we never put in an application anywhere. We can grow old watching and waiting for that relationship to be mended when we don't do anything and take our own responsibility Amen. in the mending of the relationship. I wish I was talking to somebody. I'm talking about counseling for those who watch and wait. Simeon, a man of color, had experienced opposition in his life in the form of hatred. He experienced division among his own people. He experienced captivity from social acceptance because of the color of his skin. He experienced economic uh, ill will where he should have been comfortable, but he was uncomfortable because people took from him because they did not like his color. And then he experienced problems simply because he was getting too old. Lord have mercy. In this society we live in, we disdain people because they're too young, too in between, too old, too infant, too adolescent, too young adultish, too older adultish, too old. Oftentimes we hear the story in our mainline churches that people are not with us who are younger because we don't offer them anything when the reality is we just don't relate. For if we relate, I promise you, boo-boo, they'll be there. You see, Simeon witnessed for many of his own countrymen, many of his kinsmen, 
were going through the motions of being very religious. The text says he was in the temple, but he had no real power while in the temple. Some folk come to the church week after week, Sunday after Sunday, whatever day you meet for your assembly of worship, and yet our lives do not change for the better. Why? Because we have become spiritless, ritual individuals. We come to church out of habit. And when you come out of habit, if somebody does something out of your habit, we call it unchurched. So when people don't come dressed like you, you feel that they are wrong when you're out. When people come and worship God and sing a song a different way, they are wrong or look at strange. When the reality is that you're just caught in a spiritless ritual. Amen. I wish I was talking to somebody in here today. Hope I'm talking to somebody out there through our live stream. Maybe you'll give us an emoji to let us know. But I'm telling you, you can be good. You can be holy. You can even have the Holy Spirit and still be dry. Still be spiritless. Still not fulfill purpose that God intended through our lives. We, because we have no real power in our faith that will get us through our struggles. See, my dear hearers, I don't know about others. I can only testify about myself right here. There's a reason I believe in God. There's a reason I have faith in God. And my reason is because he fits my issues. I just don't put them at the altar and leave them there. I work toward my issues. If something's wrong with me in my head, I go get some help for my head. And then when I get the help, I don't call the help just from the doctor. I say, thank you, Jesus, for sending me to the right doctor. Luke's gospel, Luke's gospel describes Simeon's story as a man who faithfully continues to serve God, faithfully continues to love others, faithfully continues to serve others around his community. But still, in spite of all that, he experiences a weariness of being unrewarded for all this love he showed. Oh, I'll go ahead and say it for you. I know somebody else won't say it. You love God with all your heart, but sometimes you look to God when others are not around. You say, God, do you really love me? You love on others, and you do the best you can, but the way some people treat you sometimes, you wonder, Lord, why am I loving them, and I never get any love back? We serve our community, do the best we can with what we have, but sometimes people won't even give us the decency of a thank you or an appreciation for the sacrifices we make. I want you to know Simeon said, I'm tired of it, Lord. I've been coming to this temple week after week. I've been doing this. week. After. I've been loving you. I've been loving others. I've been serving, but I'm not getting any satisfaction in return. And so the text says, while wow, he's in the temple, Simeon begins to experience his body failing him for the years of service rendered on behalf of others. Mentally, Simeon is exhausted and worn out over being an upright, God-fearing man who fails to see much success from his faith walk. Doing the best I can, Lord, but I just don't see any changes in my community, changes in those I'm loving on, changes in the situation around me. Lord, is it fruitless? I love you. I love others. I serve the community. But the text says one day, his hope for the consolation of Israel. I know many of you say that. How, how does this relate to Simon and getting counsel, Simeon and getting counseling? Because the word consolation means counsel. So Simeon is actually serving God, loving God, and loving on people for God to ignite counsel to his situation. <laughs> Some of you wonder why the church won't change, because they won't accept counsel. Amen. Why is the church doing the same thing the way it's always done and nothing is progressing? They refuse counseling. Good people love God, love others, and even do some things for the church every now and then. But because we fail to seek the counsel of God in what we do, Amen. we never see change. We never experience progress. 
Finally, the physician Luke describes Simeon's prescription that heals his aching soul. Anybody here want to take this prescription? I know my daughter's here. She can write you a prescription, but this is a prescription that can only be written by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. What I'm trying to tell you is that he prescribes God's healing love in the form of consultation, Thank you, Lord. comfort, Amen. counseling, Amen. therapy, Hallelujah. talking us through the issue. Yeah, see, that's the problem with too many of us. We're so spiritual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're so loving that we only devise our own idea of what the spirit is. But we never take time to actually listen to the spirit. I won't talk about you. I can only talk about myself. When I'm trying to get through some new ordeal or something, the first thing the Holy Spirit tells me is shut up and be quiet. <laughs> I heard you the first time when you asked for help. But if you would listen to my counsel, I will give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to make this situation a little bit better. And so the physician Luke tells us here that his God's healing love deals with our experiences by counseling us. What does he counsel us through? The opposition we face. What does he counsel us through? The spiritless rituals we encounter. Yeah, see, some of us are the same way we've always been in, in the spiritual house. Because we ain't listening to God tell us, I'm tired of your same worship. I'm tired of your same song. You know, some people get on me all the time, but you don't understand. Me and God, we connect. And so when I sing a song, when the song gets to me, yes. I have to say words about what God has done for me yes. in this song. Yes. I know the writer wrote the song, but he wrote it or she wrote it based on her experience yes. with God. So when I sing it, I've got to put my version of what God has done for me. May I help somebody in here? What he's done for me, he hasn't done it for you. But what he's done for you is significant. It is unique. It is special. And you want to want to tell somebody about it. He describes to him how he can get him through his spiritless ritual. You see, when week after week, live stream broadcast after live stream broadcast, service after service, Religious practice after religious practice. If it never seems to change our situations of opposition, if it never changes our spiritual drought, God will bring us therapeutic help. Yeah. Oh, Lord have mercy. If, if we would just be willing to listen to God. Yo, Sunday morning we're listening to God, but do we do we act on what he said to us? <laughs> I tell this all the time. I'm not impressed by preachers who always close with Jesus on the cross. Because yeah. sometimes I need him to tell me what Jesus will do for me. Yeah. 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 Jesus on the cross makes me happy that I got victory. But every now and then, God has to tell me how the victory comes in my life. Yeah. It's one thing to say, Jesus, get me over these cigarettes. Yeah. It's another thing when God tells you how yeah. to get over those cigarettes. Yeah. Which I was talking this time. Yeah. See, so many times, Luke, under the help of the Holy Spirit himself, destroys this terrible myth by many God-fearing people that believers don't need counsel. As a matter of fact, we've been taught the myth that if you go to counseling, it's a sign of weakness. When the truth of the matter is, if you're willing to depend on somebody guiding you through, it is the sign of divine strength. Out. Let me just go make it plain, then I can keep it moving. I promise not to be long. And that is, if you can't listen to a counselor, how in the world are you listening to God? Amen. Because when God does talk, the text says all he gives us is counsel. Yeah. So why would God send a counselor to us in flesh if we're not willing to listen to the counselor in spirit? Okay. Mm, somebody got that. that. That did it for somebody. Yeah, some people believe we don't need therapy. I don't need someone to talk me through my issues. 
I don't need anybody to help me. I, I, I know the pain I got. I don't need to go and talk about my pain. But Luke chapter 22, particularly verse 25, says that Simeon was watching and waiting for the comfort, the consolation of Israel. And verse 25 tells us that God offers him counsel, therapy. Now this is where churches, I don't care what your, your belief is about the practice of the Holy Ghost. Here is something any believer ought to have. We believe in the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost has a function to the Godhead body. And the Holy Spirit's function, oh here it is, is to guide and teach. Amen. Oh, I know somebody in the text says that he's our comforter. The comforter won't come. I just told you what comforter means in the text. Yeah. Comforter means a counselor. Yeah. So if you don't want counseling, you don't want the Holy Ghost. Maybe that's why you sit through an entire worship. Hallelujah. Never clap your hands. Glory. Never say amen. Glory. Never move your feet. Go ahead, Pastor. Never let a tear go down. Yeah. Yeah. It's because you haven't been in the counselor's office. Real. Learn how to cry yes. when you realize that last night while you slept, yes. you forgot to breathe. God yes. dispatched an angel from glory to stand by your bed. Come back to your sickness, Lord. Maybe you don't understand that when you cough, I know you think you're coughing up something, but as God says, there's something on the inside. It needs to get out on the outside. Oh, oh, oh. Here it comes. Simeon is watching and waiting for God's counsel. Oh, I hope you hear me today. When we have marital woes, do we watch and wait for the counsel of God to guide us through those bumpy roads of marriage? When educational goals are railroaded by poor grades, online classes, or even school bullies, do we teach our youth to watch and wait? For the counsel of God to guide us through the roller coaster of tests, homework assignments, and class instruction. When we have demonic spirits in high places, hindering justice for all, depleting opportunities for the impoverished to rise out of poverty, legislation that won't legislate the freedoms of citizens to live their lives in the pursuit of happiness, or even the race-on-race race crimes that build more violence in our communities. Do we watch and wait for the counsel of God to guide us through the turbulent storms of hatred, prejudice, discrimination, and injustice? I want you to know today, my dear heroes, God's healing love provides counsel. Provides comfort. Provides therapy. That will help us through these foreign agents. And spiritless rituals. That can cripple our faith. And cripple our hope. And cripple our love. I don't know what it is about a Christian. That is so hard to love. When that's our makeup. I don't know who she thinks she is. That ain't love. Purposely sitting on the other side of the church so you won't have to look at somebody else on the other side of the church. That's not love. Story about Simeon in the temple found in Luke's gospel in chapter 2 details a common reality in the lives of every human being. You see, what hindered Simeon, despite his good character, despite his faithfulness to God, was his overwhelming habit here it is, to watch things happen. Or either Simeon was guilty of wondering would anything ever happen? I know you're not ready. I, I know, I gotta break it down. So, so let me call on Nicholas Murray Butler who wrote an article about the three classes of people in life. One type of person is the person who watches things happen. That's all they do. They see it happen. They watch. 
Then there's another group of people who simply wonder what happened. Something happens around, they go, how did that occur? Why in the world would they do that? But then Brother Butler says there's a third kind of people. These are the people who make things happen. They see what's happening and they do something about it. Butler goes on to reveal in this research of these three classes of people that proves that a large number of people are simply those who just watch things happen. Be careful when you hang around. But there's some people who just hang around to watch stuff happen. Yeah. They watch and then they criticize. Yeah. They watch and then they find fault. Yeah. Then you have some that he talks about here, these persons who watch things happen. These are the people who watch politicians, public servants, not serve the best interests of the people. And so they say there's no need of me going to vote because my vote does not make a difference. Yeah. But you're the same person that talks about what they're doing wrong in the office you would not vote for. It. They only watch what happens. Yeah. Then Butler says there's an overwhelming majority of people who wonder what happened. Persons who wonder how did our streets get laden with crime and violence? I remember leaving my door open all day, but they're not telling you that that was in 1970. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. We're in 2023. Yeah, yeah. I wonder what happened. <laughs> An overwhelming majority of people are persons who say, I wonder how a non-discriminative judicial system does not do the well-being for every citizen of the commonwealth. Yeah. These people are so busy watching things. They are watching the education of our children fall by the wayside yeah. because they're more concerned about a mask yeah. than an SOL test. Yeah. Oh, I wish I was preaching to somebody here. You see, Butler goes on to say that even though that's a large number of people who watch things happen, there are even more people who just sit around wondering what happened. Wondering how did those drugs get down my street? How did those bullies get in that school? How this and how that, with no effort whatsoever on their part, to try to change who's living on your street. How yeah. to change what's happening in our schools. How to change what's happening in our homes. And so Luke chapter 2 finally says to Simeon, you're too good for the character. You're too faithful to God to keep sitting in this temple week after week. Now let me say the one verse that I know all of you said, but he never talked about it. Here it is. The first thing the Holy Spirit says to Simeon is you ain't going to die from this. Oh, I, I saw that. That, that. that was your opportunity to shout. I got to, I got to break this down for you to shout on that. <laughs> that the Holy Ghost will visit you and tell you whatever your problem is in your life, you will not die. From it. Still ain't that. I know your husband is beating on you. I know your spouse is beating on you. But I come by to tell you, it's not going to kill you. I know that there's a family member hooked on substance abuse. And you've tried everything you can. You can't seem to shake them. But I came by to tell you, they won't die from it. But here's what he says. The reason they won't die from it is because I'm tired of you sitting here, watching it, and waiting for it to happen again. Oh, y'all missed that. You can talk about politicians all you want that you don't like, but until you get up and go to the polls, until you get up and go in your community and carry others to vote, 
until you do something active that lets these politicians know we're tired of you making votes based on the party. We want you to make votes based on the condition of our communities until we stand up. We're going to keep watching and waiting. And so the Holy Ghost comes by order of God. Maybe, maybe somebody missed that opportunity. The Holy Ghost comes by order of God. Which means even if the Holy Ghost don't want to help you, he is ordered to help you. I can't talk about you. I can't really talk about me. I can be a little trifling sometimes. I can be right difficult sometimes. I can be right obstinate, mean, and mulish sometimes. But I'm so glad the Holy Ghost ain't mulish like me. Hard-headed like me. Cantankerous like me. Because the Holy Spirit is sent by God to give me some therapy. Some help, some comfort. In the midst of my spiritless rituals, in the midst of the opposition that rises against me, I'm so glad. That when I'm spiritually low, God orders the Holy Ghost to comfort me and get me spiritually high. That's why some of you get scared in worship because somebody's quiet next to you in the next minute. Hey! It's because they received that counseling from the Lord. They said, if you want me to help you on this, shout now. Because you know in the end you're going to win. I haven't fixed it yet, but I tell you to celebrate right now. Preachers wouldn't preach an effective gospel. 
My sentiments wouldn't serve me in spirit and in truth. So through the concept of time, I had to wrap up my spirit in the form of a little baby called Jesus. There is a little baby who will pick us up out of the mud and the mud. Jesus, Emmanuel, who takes us out of our despair, our hopelessness, and our calamity. The Holy Spirit gives us divine counsel and gives us guidance to know what friends to leave behind and which direction we ought to proceed. Which person has an evil spirit and which person has a good spirit because the Holy Spirit guides our decision with his powerful protection in the midst of spiritual danger. The Holy Spirit, known in the Gospels of Luke and John as the great comforter, will calm our fears of injustice, the problems of discrimination, the violence and the hatred, the deceit, and those who would try to hide our confidence in our sin. This Holy Spirit will comfort Israel. His Holy Spirit will comfort friendship. His Holy Spirit will comfort her well. This Holy Spirit will comfort everyone on our street. And He will be with us. This Holy Spirit will talk to us and give us knowledge about these worldly events that cause us to see death. But the Holy Spirit will tell us to rest on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. When we seek God's counsel for watching and waiting, we won't stand idly by on the sidelines watching things happen. The text says when we embrace and put God's counsel into our lives, we won't look at the situations of our world and wonder what happened. We won't just watch what happens because we are full of the Holy Spirit. So that verse 27 says our watching and waiting will turn into an action. Simeon heard from the Holy Ghost. But when he heard the Holy Ghost this time, he didn't go into the temple to sit still like a bump on the law. He didn't go to the temple to just say, I love the Lord. He heard the cry. The text says he went up into the temple looking for Mary and Joseph because he heard the child of promise was coming to be dedicated to the Lord. Y'all missed it. Whenever Jesus is coming into a building, you ought to want to be nearby. Simeon said, the Holy Ghost promised that I would not see death until I saw my salvation. He forced his way to the temple. He went through his despair to the temple. He went through his hopelessness to the temple. He went through his doubt to the temple. But when he got there, the Bible says, Oh, Mary and Joseph saw the disposition of Simeon and gave him the Christ child. Now, this is where I'm going in. The rest of the verse says, When Simeon held Jesus, when Jesus embraced Simeon, he broke out into a song. He broke out into a dance. He realized 
that his song was just for him. But remember, when the Lord puts Jesus in your arms, when the Lord puts Jesus in your life, when he takes you through storms and turbulent trials, when the Lord picks you up in the midst of your bereavement and grief, when God gives you counsel through your sickness and your distress, you gotta do what Simeon did. He broke out in a song of praise. I can hear somebody now breaking out this joy. I have. The world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. I hear somebody who's been delivered. I hear somebody singing. He's sweet, I know. Strong clouds may rise, strong winds may blow, but I'll tell the world wherever I go that I found the Savior, and he's sweet, I know. Somebody else may get another deliverance and sing it this way. Nobody greater than somebody over here will say he broke every chain. Somebody in the back will say fear is not my future. Somebody in the middle aisle will sing all things new. I don't know what you gonna sing, but you ought to sing that the Lord has brought counsel in my life to bring us up and turn us around. And he gives us the Savior to embrace so that our watching and waiting will incite us to action. That's the counsel we need for those who watch and wait. And as the line was demonstrated today, have thine own way, Lord. And if he has his own way, he's the part we are the clay. He'll break what we presently have. Mold us and make us into what we can be. Amen, somebody. Somebody ought to say, sign me up. For a Christian too. I've been trained since the Lord is it. I won't be ready when he comes. To our live stream audience today, we want to encourage you that while you're watching what's happening, while you're wondering what's happening, Jesus wants to counsel you to make things happen for the better in your life. Here's all you have to do, except this Jesus we've been talking about. I hope you've heard us today, because while you're watching and waiting, he's already commanding him to come to see about us. He's already bringing your comfort to your situation. All we have to do is hear it, heed it, use the works of our hand. He promises to make it better. Follow the information on your screen. We promise you that we'll contact you, we'll help you. If you don't want to be a part of this church friendship, we'll send you to a Bible-based church in your area. But the important thing is don't leave this broadcast without a relationship to Christ. Because he will give you a therapist that can fix every problem in your life. In the words of Charles Barkley, God on key to fix your life. Just trust him today. Those on the main floor, we give you this same opportunity. If you're looking for hope and direction, if you're looking for that difference in your life, we offer you Jesus. We offer him to you free and without cost. All it takes is for you to believe in it. And to watch and wait by the raising of your hand. These persons walking the aisles. I promise you they'll come to you. They'll minister to you in a unique way. But the important thing is to have that meaningful relationship to Christ. And you can do it right now. We don't care how you come. The important thing is to unite with Jesus. That's why we don't worry about how a person
mercy come. We just want you to make that commitment to Christ. Because Christ has already encouraged us to make a commitment to you. So while they're ministering to those live, we want to say to our live stream audience, thank you for joining us again. We encourage you to continue to join our broadcast. We want to encourage you to continue to bless us with your gift giving through our Friendship Baptist Amplify app. We want you to know that those gifts you give us encourage us to keep helping people in our community to receive the counsel of God. And so until we see you again next time, may the blessings of God keep you. May his counsel be with you to take you through every opposition and spiritless habit you have that he will bring you his peace. In Jesus' name. Hope to see you next week. We love you right back. To those on the main floor.